Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to show you how to create a dashboard card and an actionable notification that will tell you if there are server updates available. These will be across Home Assistant Community Store, or Hacks as it's known, Home Assistant OS, Core, and Supervisor. The reason we need this is at this point, updates are referenced in different sections with different notification methods. For OS, Core, and Supervisor add-on, these are reported in the notifications and are clearly displayed and take you to the section where these can be actioned. Hence why over 50% of you are running on at least last month's version of Home Assistant. Check out the installation analytics in the top right hand corner. However, for hacks updates, you need to drill into hacks to find out if there are updates and action them accordingly. We'll show you how to bring these together into a single place and allow you to update directly from the dashboard. The design will be based on the mushroom cards, as these are the best simplistic cards currently available and are simple to install and use. Links in the description above. Let's dive on in and get configuring. First, let's focus on enabling the update entities required for the add-ons installed. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, search for and select Home Assistant Supervisor. Press the hyperlink for the services. You will be presented with a list of all services that you have running on your Home Assistant. This will be more than the number of add-ons that you have running, as this includes services for additional services such as OS and Supervisor. Systematically, select each of the entries. Select the hyperlink for the entities not shown. Now you can turn on all of these entries if you wish to report against these, but we are only focusing on the new versions and the current versions. Select the new versions, select the cog, go down to the enable toggle switch and turn on. Now you can change the name or the icon at this point in time, but it's not required. Press update. You'll be greeted with a message saying that the entity will become available in about 30 seconds. Press OK. Now press the version sensor and repeat the exercise. Navigate back to the main list. Now systematically go through all of the entries on this list. Make sure that the version and the newest version have been enabled. Next, we'll be enabling the hacks update entities. We'll need hacks installed. If not, you follow the link in the pop-up above. Install hacks and come back to this video. In hacks by default, we can only see the updates that are currently available. This by itself is still a useful value but we need to go one further and be able to report on an action if there are any updates available for each installed Hacks integration. For this, we'll need to use the Hacks experimental features. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, search for Hacks and select. Press the Configure button and at the bottom you'll see Enable Experimental Features. Toggle this on and press Submit. Now press Finish. We're going to need to restart Home Assistant. Navigate to Developer Tools, Check your configuration. If it reports back, configuration will not prevent Home Assistant from restarting. Press Restart, Restart Home Assistant, and confirm with Restart, and come back when finished. We have now done all the preparation work that will allow us to create the actionable notification and dashboard. So let's start with the actionable notification. We'll create an actionable notification for when there is a hacks integration that needs to be updated. Now we have covered actionable notifications previously. See the link in the pop-up, but for this instance, let's use a super simple blueprint to make the process easier. In the description below is a link to import a blueprint from central command. This super useful blueprint takes all the guesswork out of creating actionable notifications. Thanks guys. Press the link in the description, adjust the URL if required and press open link. Now press preview and import your blueprint. Now let's create the automation based on the blueprint. Navigate to Automations, Create an Automation, scroll down and select the blueprint of Update Notifications. In the Entity Type, search for and select Hacks Update. In the Mobile App Device, select your device that has your companion app loaded. Now I have found a bug here. If you try and save this device now, by pressing Save, giving it a name and press Save again, you'll get Message Malformed Unknown Device. The workaround for this is to load in a second mobile app device. I've selected the same mobile app device. Now if you press save and rename, the automation will save successfully. You can leave everything else as default inside of the automation. Now to test this out, go to the three dots in the top right hand corner and press run. On our mobile phone, a notification will appear. 
long pressing on the notification will allow for a drill down. You will now be given the options to update or skip the update. Now, since we are going to be reporting on system updates, then as a value add, let's incorporate some system metrics for CPU usage, RAM usage, disk space usage, etc. For this, we'll use a very helpful integration called System Monitor. Super simple to set up and provides a wealth of information for our system. For this, we're going to go to Settings, Devices and Services, press the Add Integration in the bottom right, search for and select System Monitor. Press Submit to finish the installation. Optionally, give it an area and press Finish. Now selecting the System Monitor, you'll see that there are 76 new entities that have been added that cover hardware components. These are all now available to report on. Next, we'll be focusing on creating a dashboard for our Home Assistant server updates. This relates to updates to the core supervisor and OS. In addition, as a value add to increase functionality, we'll add a splash of sensors from the system monitor. The creation of this dashboard is a whole video on its own, as it leverages lots of different skills from templates to state attributes. So I've put the code in the description below so that you can simply copy and paste it. To create the dashboard, go to Settings, Dashboards, Add a Dashboard, press the New Dashboard from scratch, give it a name, and press Create. Now navigate to your dashboard. Now press the three dots in the top right hand corner and edit your dashboard. And again, press the three dots in the top right hand corner, Raw Editor Configurator. Copy the code from the description, overtype the content of the editor and press Paste. Now press Save. And in the top left hand corner, next to the Edit Configuration, press the X. Now press Done. You should now be presented with the completed dashboard. As we've installed all the prerequisites for this dashboard, it should look exactly the same as mine and shouldn't need to be adjusted. However, if you do have issues, it should only be related to indentations of the YAML based on the copy paste and should be an easy fix. If we split screen now, we can see that the core is at 2024.1.6 and matches off against the core version, likewise for supervisor and likewise for the OS. Next, we'll be covering the updates for our add-ons. We'll be leveraging the cards that we've already implemented for the Home Assistant server updates by adjusting them for add-ons. We'll focus this to specific key add-ons for simplicity, but you can include all add-ons if required. For the purposes of the demonstration, we'll be using the MariaDB add-on. In our Update Tracker dashboard, select the three dots in the top right-hand corner and Edit Dashboard. Press the Add card in the bottom right-hand corner Search for and select Manual. Now copy the code from the description and overtype the configuration that's already there. You should now see a preview of your card. Before we press Save, if you are replicating this card for other add-ons, then the parts you're going to change will be the title, the add-on version and newest version, and the entities for the sensor relating to the add-on. It should be noted that these vary between add-ons so you'll need to search for the add-on entity and select the appropriate sensor entities. Now press Save and press Done. Next, we'll cover Hacks Updates. Similar to how we reported on specific updates for key add-ons, we'll list key Hacks components that we wish to track for update. In our dashboard, press the three dots in the top right-hand corner, Edit Dashboard. Press the Add card in the bottom right-hand corner. Search for and select Manual. Copy the code from the description select the contents of the editor and press paste. You should now see a preview of what will be displayed. To tune this card specifically for your requirements, the card has a title of Hacks Update. The release change log is a URL redirect that sends you to the page for Hacks Updates. The installed version of Hacks and the latest version of Hacks is displayed. In the bottom section of the card, I have listed off five different Hacks integrations. This is the portion of the card that you will change if you require to add additional or change the existing ones. The only sections that you need to change will be the entity for the update dot followed by the entity for the update for the specific hacks and the name associated with that. Replicate this as many times as you wish for your specific hacks integrations that you wish to track for update. Now press save and press done. I think you'll agree, this is a useful dashboard that is feature rich, puts all your update information into a single place and that can be tuned to your specific needs. Hopefully this will simplify the task of managing all your home assistant updates in whatever form or flavor they come in. 
as a value add, you might want to take a look at the code we implemented for states and icon colors. This is a great way of enhancing your existing cards to bring a representation of color or changing the icon based on the state. If you'd like a video that covers this, then let me know in the comments below. Until the next one, remember to keep everything up to date so it continues to work perfectly.